OK, we're going to look at uh, setting up standing waves in pipes. So um, these two lines are supposed to be the cross-section of a pipe. And we know from things like recorders and flutes and clarinets uh, that you can make pipes make noises uh, if you just get the air inside them to vibrate, uh, which you could do by maybe um, uh, blowing across the right kind of hole for a musical instrument. Or in experiments we do, we might hold a tuning fork uh, well, that's a bad drawing of one, uh, near the end of the pipe and get the air to uh, vibrate. Or we've seen some tubes that you can just give them a whack and that will make them uh, a sound a note. So uh, what kinds of vibrations we can get? Well, can we get? Well, it depends on, on the configuration of the ends of the pipes. OK, let's start with a closed end to the pipe. OK, the air at this end, remember, um, these are actually uh, longitudinal waves. Though I'm going to be drawing wavy pictures, uh, as I mentioned in an er earlier picture. Um, th the air at this end of the pipe um, can't really move because it's closed. So this is bound to be, on a closed end of the pipe, we're bound to get a node. Okay. Whereas on the open end of the pipe, uh, the air can move backwards and forwards in an unrestrained way. And it turns out uh, that this is um, a an anti-node. OK, well, if we're being strictly correct, actually, uh, because the wave just sort of edges out a little bit beyond the end of the pipe uh, as it sort of dissipates into the air, the actual antinode is just a little bit off the edge of the pipe. Uh, but uh, uh, we're not going to bother about that. We're going to say antinode at this end of the pipe and we won't be far wrong. OK, um, so if I open that end of the pipe again, then this would become an antinode. And let's start talking about pipes that are are open at both ends because they're sort of um, quite easy to talk about. So this is an antinode. So so um, the uh, air at this end is going to have maximum amplitude of oscillations. OK, and same here. OK, uh, now the, the simplest possible case is where, well, I'm now going to draw this as, 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 a, as a transverse style wave, even though the actual oscillations will be longitudinal. So if this is a maximum, OK, um, then I've got to get a maximum amplitude. Then uh, the, 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 the shortest way to get to maximum amplitude over here is to go via one node and have that configuration there, OK? Uh, if there's any oscillation at all. I can't go straight from an antinode to another antinode because uh, that wouldn't be a wave at all, would it? Um, so in the middle, I've got a node, OK? Um, and for this... Um, uh, 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 particular wave here, the length of the pipe um, is actually uh, from an antinode to the next antinode, you know and can see is half a wavelength. Yeah, to get back to an equivalent point to this, I'd need the other half of the wave going off in that direction. Um, so this is half a wavelength. Um, and that's the, the simplest kind of uh, uh, wave we can set up in this pipe. This is the deepest note. This is called the uh, fundamental mode of uh, oscillation. And uh, in order to um, work out the uh, frequency, I'd have to use V equals uh, F lambda. So if I know this lambda, because I know the length of the, the uh, pipe, I can work out um, that uh, the frequency will be um, the, the speed divided by um, lambda. OK, so I can find lambda by doubling the length of the pipe. OK, and I can find the frequency by doing uh, V divided by lambda, and V is going to be the speed of sound, because these are sound waves, uh, and V is the speed of the waves. So that's the speed of sound. OK, so in practice, um, I can actually probably measure this, this F, and I can measure the length of the pipe, and I can uh, estimate the speed of sound from my calculation. OK, but while we're looking at this picture, this isn't the only kind of standing wave that can live in this pipe. OK, um, this is chosen just to go through uh, one node straight down to the antinode. Um, but I could make uh, this an antinode in phase with that one. OK, and have another antinode in the centre of the pipe. And I could have a standing wave that looks like this. This obeys the rules. That's an antinode. That's an antinode. And now I've got a whole wavelength. Um, in between. So now for this ha this uh, higher harmonic, this is sometimes called an overtone, um, we call the different frequencies that we can get from oscillations in the same pipe harmonics. For the next harmonic, um, the length of the pipe now will be a whole wavelength. Okay, my my antinodes, consecutive antinodes, that distance is halved. So um, the, the the length of the pipe is now a whole wavelength because the wavelengths got shorter. Okay. Um,
And so the frequency um, compared with, um, of course, L is fixed. Okay, so so um, uh, the the wavelength is now half what it was before. So this value is half what it was before. So if I call that fun that that frequency up there, the the fundamental frequency f naught, um, the f the the frequency for this half harmonic will now be um, twice the frequency um, of the the fundamental. Okay. All right, and then we can go to higher harmonics. Maybe I better do the next one in a different color. So I'm going to go from this antinode here, okay. I'm now going to end up down here as I did with the first one, but I'm going to go via two more antinodes, okay. So I'm going to have uh, an antinode going, uh, hitting the bottom here, and an antinode uh, in phase with the first one here, and go via various nodes, okay. Uh, uh. Uh, there we go. So now I've got one, two, three nodes, okay, uh, and I've got, um, I begin and end on an antinode, so I'm still within the rules, okay, and I've got to do some calculations now. Remember the distance from an antinode to the next antinode is always half a wavelength. So now, in the length of my pipe, I've got one, two, three half wavelengths, okay? In fact, you can see the first wavelength from here to a point in phase, there's a whole wavelength, and this other bit is a half wavelength. But it's normally easiest to count in half or even quarter wavelengths. So half plus a half plus a half. So now, the whole length of my pipe for, the, for this harmonic, this higher frequency, is um, now three over two lambda. So it's got, so lambda, okay, L is fixed, so lambda is now a third of the original wavelength. So the frequency for the green harmonic, okay, is going to be three times, the, the, the wavelength is a third as big, so the frequency is three times as big as the fundamental frequency. And you can see how that pattern is going to carry on, okay? So that's pipes uh, which are open at both ends.